Welcome to Joe the Quilter's Cottage. The Heather Thatch Cottage of George and Quilter Joseph Headley has been recreated in Beamish's 1820s landscape. It's the first building in our exciting remake in Beamish project, the biggest development in the museum's history. Joe was murdered in 1826 in an horrific crime that shocked the nation and the culprit has never been found. Beamish staff and volunteers have recreated Joe's lost cottage which once stood in Warden in Northumberland. We've included stones from Joe's original home which were uncovered during an archaeological dig at the site of the cottage which was demolished in 1872. So we're set in the 1820s here and um, we're showing what industry and life was like during that time. So during the 19th century we're seeing that industrial revolution sweeping the country and the major industries appearing on the banks of the Tyne. But at the same time there's all these sort of smaller cottage industries are still booming, just like our little quilters cottage behind us. So there's a town down the road called Bishop Auckland uh, and in the 1820s there were 2,500 people lived there and out of those people 1,828 of them had their own small business. So it's a huge story that we can now tell here at Beamish. Uh, people often ask us why we've chosen to build a quilter's cottage as opposed to maybe a clog maker or a basket maker and that's because we have an internationally renowned quilting collection. There's over 400 of them in the collection. One of the quilts in that collection was made by a man called Joseph Headley. Uh, he was known locally in, in Warden uh, which is near Hexham in Northumberland as Joe the Quilter uh, and we know a huge amount of, about Joseph Headley because very sadly he was brutally murdered in 1826. Um, now people like Joe wouldn't have really been recorded in much detail because sadly they were quite ordinary uh, and Joe in particular was quite poor um, but because he was murdered we have a huge amount of information that was massively important when planning and researching this exhibit. Uh, we know things like what furniture was inside his house from the auction that took place afterwards, we know what his personality was like and the age of his wife when he was married so all this information allows us to create this really exciting exhibit about a named individual. One of the documents that was produced at the time of Joe's murder was a postcard and that postcard showed what the building looked like and it was hugely important for the team when we started researching this building uh, and we can show you that postcard when you come to visit the museum we can show you what that looked like and hopefully it looks a lot like this. So features such as the heather thatch roof, the, the crack that's down it um, which isn't anything that's gone drastically wrong, there was no foundations on Joe's cottage when it was first built, um, little things like the bink outside and that beautiful stonework all of which has been gathered from Northumberland to create this, this vernacular building as part of our Georgian landscape. Beamish staff and volunteers tracked down the site of Joe's Cottage in Warden and carried out an archaeological dig. They were excited to discover the base of three of the four walls, flagstones from the floor, along with a fireplace and many objects, including a coin, pottery, buttons, a bottle and a metal nameplate. This excavation told us about the layout and the size of the cottage. This is kind of the end of the project for us, but this has been a really long project for the museum. We've been involved for a couple of years now. We started with an archaeological dig um, with community members and staff here on site uh, and some archaeology students. We found um, some of the flagstones for the building and some of the lower courses of stonework and uh, some of the brick from the hearth. Because it was such a vernacular building, we wanted to get all of our materials from uh, the Northumberland area, which is where the cottage originally stood. So we started with the stone, but the oak for the crook frame and the heather for the heather thatch came from Northumberland as well. They were collected um, from the moor side for the heather and from local forests for the oak. A lot of people are quite surprised to see the heather thatch here down on this building but it was once very common across this area in North Yorkshire and in Northumberland where this cottage originally stood. Um, it is quite a rare skill now, not many people thatch with heather. We had a master thatcher, William Tegmeyer, come in and he has worked quite a lot extensively with thatch and he came to um, help us assist us thatch this building. So a lot of the work for this building was done here with our in-house team. So we've got an in-house team of masons who did all of the stonework, who worked really hard through one of the worst winters that we've ever had using lime water. So uh, we've sped everything up now, the weather's gone lovely. The oak for the crook frame as well was split here on site, so it was delivered and our joiners and carpenter team split everything by hand, um, over 160 rafters and the large crook frame itself. Joe's cottage is a vernacular building. 
This means that it is built with local techniques and local styles using locally sourced materials. Community members in Warden were involved in the project at every stage, including the excavation as well as learning heritage skills such as thatching, helping with the building, preparing collections and helping to plan the gardens. Community volunteers came to Beamish to lay the first of the original stones in the building. So Joe the Quilters has been an excellent opportunity to work with lots of different people across Northumberland. Um, I think we were, first went up to Northumberland in 2014, 2015, uh, where we held an open meeting really to tell people about our plans to rebuild the cottage and the fact that we'd be doing an archaeological excavation of the cottage site. Uh, so staff at the museum had found it using old maps um, and we didn't know if we would find anything, um, but we thought it was worth a try to see if um, the excavation could tell us anything more about the cottage, the dimensions and things things like that. Uh, so we had a group of people from the local area that took part in that excavation and they've really stayed with the project all the way through. So a couple of those volunteers have uh, researched and designed the gardens that you can see on either side of Joe's cottage. Um, we've had volunteers involved in gathering the heather from Rothbury. Um, we've had people working with the collections team. So that group of people have really kind of um, been involved throughout the whole process really. They came and laid some of the original stones that we took from the farmer's field back on uh, into the build, um, they've done stonemasonry, joinery, it's been kind of a really hands-on um, chance and opportunity to look at heritage skills and how we put buildings here into the Beamish landscape. Um, so there's been that side of the project and then we've also been working with um, community groups and schools across Northumberland about uh, more widely about the Joe the Quilter story and uh, what you'll be able to see is some of the quilts that have been made as part of the project. Obviously Joe's profession was making quilts um, and we've been uh, um, inspiring people and working with people and such as the Quilters Guild and things like that to ensure that uh, his craft is not forgotten. So we've worked with uh, craft groups across Northumberland as well as individuals and volunteers who have made a word quilt of Northumberland. Um, this was started by a writer in residence at the museum called Becky Sharrock and it was all really inspired by all the words that were written about Joseph Headley after he was killed and thinking about his profession as well. Uh, so we went out uh, and on various community sessions and at events we asked people to add special memories, words, favourite places about Northumberland um, and it became sort of this cardboard quilt that lived on my desk um, and then working with the Beamish Craft Club um, we thought we could we would have a go at making it into a quilt so on display are three panels of the Northumberland word quilt and on there you can see people's interpretations of the favourite places, um, memories and things like that uh, that have been uh, put into a quilt. Um, we've also did some work with uh, the Sewing Sisters at Low Newton Prison, uh, so the women's prison in Durham. We did some work with them about Georgian history, the life of women in Georgian times, and about the story of Joe the Quilter. Now, after Joe was killed, there was a ballad by A. Wright written about him, um, and the ladies at the prison kind of looked at the verses that were in there and interpreted various elements of the story of what happened to Joe, from him being sort of a kindly man who loved to spend time in his garden through to uh, what eventually happened to him um, and you can see that story told on a quilt on display as well. Um, throughout the whole project we've worked with the Quilters Guild who have been um, absolutely fantastic in terms of kind of support and really kind of encouraging us and uh, working with us on the project and they've made an absolutely wonderful silhouette quilt uh, which features members um, of their regional committee 15A which is the the committee for this region um, and that's on display in St Helens as well. Quilting is at the heart of Joe's story. It's a tradition that has been popular for hundreds of years. The skills and designs have been passed down through the generations of families. Beamish's quilt collection is world famous. We have 350 quilts, some of which have been displayed in Japan, America and across the UK. Joe's quilt in our collection was made in around 1820, six years before his death. Joe was well known for a border pattern on his quilts known as Old Joe's Chain. Volunteer Quilt has spent over 700 hours carefully recreating Joe's quilt for our collection. A ballad written by A. Wright just after poor Joe's death tells the tale of this awful crime. An interpretation of this, the ballad of Joe the Quilter by the Rand Tanners and Bill Elliott, was performed at the opening of Joe's Cottage at Beamish. When you come into Joe's Cottage um, and when you approach Joe's Cottage, uh, already we've noticed that the, the thing that's immediately taken people's attention is the, is the roof.
Um, it's a thatched roof, uh, but it's thatched with heather. But also, once you're actually in the door, what's amazing um, is this split oak um, uh, roof construction, so a crook construction. Um, the oak was felled in Northumberland. It was split by our team here who've done a fantastic job and it was put into place. It's like a fantastic kind of um, jigsaw um, construction. Um, it's been put together uh, using uh, proper doweling methods. Um, so again, when, as a visitor, when you look up, you can, you can see those traditional methods of construction uh, in the roof. Um, Joe uh, kept his chickens inside. Uh, wasn't uncommon for people to keep small stock inside the, the, the cottage. Um, the, the, the room is divided in two to where his chickens were, uh, to where he lived, by a Watland daub um, partition wall. So again, Watland daub is made from a, a, a very tightly woven split hazel frame and into that frame is pressed a mixture of uh, straw, dung, mud, a bit of clay, to, all that sort of stuff to bind it together and that's pressed in. Uh, a good daub and wattle wall will actually stand up to about sort of 700 years once it's cured uh, and gone off properly. Um, the, as we mentioned before, we were, we were lucky in that we know what Joe had um, because of the auction. So the actual interior um, has been put together using that information. So we know things like, you know, he had a table, he had chairs, he had this, he had that. So the, the team has been quite accurate in, in what they've reinstalled around. Um, uh, so nothing too plush as well. Um, Joe was living on poor relief. Um, so uh, we know his income was not particularly, uh, it was not particularly high, um, but we've given him what we feel he would need to live uh, a day, his day-to-day -day lives, uh, his day-to-day -day life based on the, uh, the information in, from the auction lists. It's uh, a really lovely feeling to be able to see Joe's just about to open and to have seen it come from the start all the way through. Um, there's been lots of people from all kinds of teams and from outside the museum involved in this project. So it's been wonderful how all the teamwork has pulled together to create such an amazing exhibit. It was sort of a hair on the back of the neck moment really because it's, you know, it's quite a long time since I was stood in that field in Northumberland in the footprint of a cottage where really something really tragic had happened and then to sort of stand in in the same position but within the building that has been recreated and the the skill and the research and the level of detail that's gone into it through all of the people that have worked on the project is absolutely amazing and I think it's, um, it's something that everyone who's been involved with should feel really proud of. I think it looks absolutely fantastic and just uh, I'm so glad to have had the opportunity to kind of play a small part in it. Uh, it it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, everyone who has been involved in this from start to finish and I think something like over 200 people have contributed to this project be it sort of uh, the team here or com uh, community groups. Um, you know, I don't really want to miss anyone out but two, 200 people have, have, have given input in, into this and it's fantastic um, and I feel really uh, chuffed um, uh, to, to, to actually be able to sit here um, uh, it, um, and looking around it really uh, it, it already has that feel of something lived in um, and I think that's what we do really quite well here at Beamish um, the, 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 the team have done a fantastic job in, in putting all and bringing this all together it's, it's amazing Thanks to money raised by the National Lottery Players, the Remake and Beamish project has been awarded £10.9 million by the Heritage Lottery Fund. Joe the Cultist Cottage is the first building in our £18 million Remake and Beamish project, which also includes a 1950s town, 1950s farm and a Georgian coaching room where you'll be able to stay overnight. <laughs>